Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to uh, a problem from the Code Chef August 2018 lunchtime contest entitled Mix Mix Game. The problem states Vanja and Mixie really like games. After playing one game for a long time, they decided to invent another game. In this game, they have a sequence A1 through AN and two numbers Z1 and Z2. The rules of the game are as follows. The players take turns alternately, starting with Vanja. There is an integer S at the beginning, S is equal to zero. In each turn, the current player must choose an arbitrary element of A and either add that number to S or subtract it from S. Each element can be selected multiple times. Afterwards, if S is equal to Z1 or S is equal to Z2, the current player, the player who made S equal to that number, is the winner of the game. If the game lasts for 10 to the 10 turns, Vanja and Miski decide to declare it a tie. Can you help the boys determine the winner of the game? Please note that the game can end in a tie if nobody's able to make S equal to either Z1 or Z2 in the first 10 to the 10 moves. Both players play optimally, i.e. if there is a move which guarantees the current player's victory, regardless of the other player's moves, the current will make such a move, and if the current player cannot win and there is a move which guarantees that the game will end in a tie, the current player will make that move as well. So, uh... A lot in that problem statement. Note to the right here we have uh, constraints and subtasks. So the number of test cases T uh, is going to be between 1 and uh, 50. The number of uh, values from A1 to AN is going to be between 1 and 50 as well. Z1 and Z2 are going to be less than 10 to the 9, absolutely. So that means an integer will do. And uh, the values in uh, AI as well are going to be less than 10 to the 9. And note that we have two tasks here, so if you can solve this problem for n equal to 2, you'll get 25 points out of 100, and original constraints get you the full points. So let's take a look at the uh, example that Code Chef provided us with. And a note just right off the top is that we know that we're not going to be implementing a full-blown, uh, you know, turn-by-turn -turn algorithm, which goes 10 to the 10 steps, because this is going to time out um, immediately. So we know that that is not going to be uh, an, an option for us. Um, so we're going to need to do better than that, and probably some game theory is going to be involved, typically with these types of games where you go back and forth turn to turn. So over to the Code Chef uh, example they provided us with. So here is the example input. Um, the number at the top here, 3, is our test cases. Then we're given um, the number of values for a uh, 1 to an, so this one has 2, our second case has 1, and our third case has 2, and uh, the values on the third, or the second row of each case represent those a values, so here we have negative 4 and 10, and then our two target values, z1 and z2, are 6 and 4, uh, 1 and negative 1, and 0 and 7, so let's take a look at each of these test cases one by one. Uh, so for our first test case, they provide the explanation that the first player, uh, which is Vanja, can choose a1 equal to negative 4, subtract it from uh, 0, and thus obtain uh, ne minus negative 4, which will give you 4, and uh, then you end up with our target z2. So Vanja will be the winner, and we want to output 1. Um, so basically what that's saying is we have two target numbers, and uh, we have some source numbers. And so we can take any of these numbers any number of times, but only one number per turn, and then either subtract it from s, which starts off being 0, or add it to s. So uh, here, if we go minus negative 4, we get our target 4, and therefore uh, Vanja wins. So the first thing we should do whenever we are constructing our numbers is just add to our vector the negative of each of our numbers. So if we have negative 4 and 10 here, we should add a positive 4 and negative 10 and just check our, either of our targets in this list. If that's the case, we know that player 1, which is Vanja, is going to win, so we're going to output 1. So that is the first step to this problem, which takes care of our first turn. Um, so here, as I said, uh, Vanja is the winner. And for our second case, this doesn't really tell us much. Um, our target values are 1 and negative 1, and we can see that it's impossible to get to either of those numbers, uh, starting from 0 and adding and subtracting only 2. Uh, so it just says this is going to be a tie, so that's zero. That's not that helpful. Um, the most insight we're going to get is from looking at our third test case. So for our third test case, they don't provide any explanation, so you sort of have to figure this one, want this one out for yourself. We have the target number 0 and 7, and uh, the source numbers, once we uh, negate the original values, uh, 3, 4, and negative 3, and negative 4. 
So if we apply our first uh, or the rule that we've created for our first turn, we check to see is either of our target values in this list of numbers. Um, if so, uh, Vanja wins, but in this case, it's not. Um, so we're going to need to figure out what to do for the second step. And for the second step, what we'll note, as we can see from this output, is that we know that um, mix C is going to win. And that's because regardless of the value that Vanja chooses on turn number one, uh, mix C can get back or two, uh, one of the target values. So if uh, Vanja chooses a three or a four, then Mixi can choose also a three or a four and get to seven. Um, and if Vanja chooses negative three or negative four, um, Vanja can just uh, apply the positive and then get to zero. Um, so in this case, what we want to do is uh, check to see if there is any a uh, way in which uh, Mixi can lose on this turn. If there's always a way that Mixi can get to one of the target values, then we know uh, he or he is going to win. Um, and we can do this just by checking that for each of these values that Vanja can choose, uh, if we if we check every other every value that we compare it with, including itself, can we get to a target value? So it's basically just a nested for loop. It's going to be quadratic runtime and just check for every single value. Is there at least one value that also exists in the same set that will get us to either Z1 or Z2? And if this is the case, Mixi wins. Um, and for all other cases, and this might not be clear, but I'll explain it, um, it's going to be a tie. And this is because at this point, uh, if Vanja hasn't won on the first term and Mixi hasn't won on the second turn, uh, both of them are always going to play so that their opponent can't win. Um, and so, like I said, that, that might not be clear, but the reason that is, is think of this case where our target is no longer 0 and 7, but it's negative 10 and 10. So technically, um, at some point, one of the players could win, and if it was in sort of the shortest number of terms, it would be Vanja that would win, because you could choose uh, 3, 4, and then 3, so, uh, or, you know, uh, some combination of those numbers to get us to 10, or the negative versions of those to get us to negative 10. Um, so, you know, if Vanja were to choose 3, Mixi were to choose uh, 4, and then Vanja were to choose 3, then Vanja would win. But because this takes more than the two steps that both, or the two turns that both players need to make, Mixi's never going to choose 4. Mixi's always going to choose a number like negative 3. So Vanja would choose 3, then Mixi would choose negative 3, and that just gets S back to 0. And Mixi is always going to do this because uh, Mixi doesn't want Vanja to win. Um, and, and so that sort of means that if Vanja can't win on the first term, and there's no way that Vanja can prevent Mixi winning on the second term. If it's not one of those two cases, then Mixi and Vanja can always prevent the other player from winning. And so that's what's going to happen. It's just going to go back and forth. So we don't need to worry about the 10 to the 10 turns. Uh, we're never going to run into those cases. As long as we deal with the first turn and the second turn, then we can just return a zero in the cases where it doesn't uh, capture, it's not captured by either one of these two. So hopefully that's clear. Um, and now I'm going to do something that uh, I typically don't do. I'm going to show the code that I actually submitted uh, during the contest, and then I'll show a little bit of a, a cleaned up version after that. So here's the code for solving this problem. So as usual at the top here, we just have a macro and a type alias to make our code a little bit shorter. We're reading in T, and then we're reading in N, A, and B. So really, this should be Z1 and Z2. I just It's easier to type A and B during the contest. So then we declare our vector of integers V, and we read in X. And then, uh, as mentioned in the explanation uh, before, we want to uh, push into our vector X and negative X. Um, and then we're just uh, declaring a lambda here to make it easier to check if uh, one of our numbers is equal to A or B. And then we're taking care of the first case. So on the first case here, we're just checking is either of our uh, targets A or B in our vector V. So if we can find A or we can find B, um, output 1 because that means Vanja wins. Um, in the else case, now we are just going to try and see if it's possible um, for Mixi to prevent, uh, or Vanja to prevent Mixi from winning on the second term. And so basically what we're doing is for each value, uh, 
j we're going to set up basically a boolean that's initially set uh, to be true or is set to be false and then we're going to loop through and combine that with every other value and if at any point um, you know t starts off false but we can get to uh, one of our targets with one of the other values i we're going to set t to be true and uh, basically what that means is that if vanja picks j but then mixy picks his i uh, that means uh, vanja shouldn't pick j because uh, mixy can just pick i and then get to the target so that means starting with the value j for vanja uh, there is a possible way for mixy to get to one of the targets and so t at this point will be equal to true and outside of this the outer loop around this is basically checking that every single number that vanja has to true that vanja has to choose uh, has to have a case where it can where Mixie can get to one of the targets in order for uh, Mixie to be able to win. So if there's at least one case, so you can see here that we're initializing good to true. If there's at least one number in the set of numbers that we're given at the beginning, that if Vanja chooses, there's no possible number that Mixie can choose to get to a target, then Vanja can choose that and then Mixie won't be able to win. Um, so that's what these two loops are doing here. And so if at the end good is still equal to true, output two, uh, because that means every single number that Vanja chooses, Mixie will still be able to choose one to get to a target. Otherwise, we know it's going to uh, result in a tie, so output zero. So this code, uh, as they say about competitive coding solutions, they're uh, write once, read never. So I typically wouldn't show this, but I wanted to show it to you uh, to highlight that uh, initially when I solved this problem, I wasn't sure how to solve it for uh, the, all the cases, but the subtask where n is equal to 2 is pretty clear. And when I wrote the n is equal to 2 code, I realized, wait a second, this just generalizes uh, to the uh, normal case where you can have n up to 50. Um, so I this inner loop, I guess, or both of these loops were constrained by only checking two, I, and I didn't have them in loops, and then I realized it generalized. So uh, sometimes it's good to, if you can't immediately think of how to solve the bigger task, solve the subs task, and then it might be easier to move up to the big task. Um, the better version of this code uh, I'll show in a second, but you might have been looking at this and thinking it was pretty ugly, and that's because it is. So how many algorithms are in this uh, solution that are not being used? So the most obvious one is this uh, first if statement here. So this is just an any of. I'm checking if there are any uh, A's or B's in my vector. And it's really sad that I didn't, because uh, this is way more characters than an any of v begin dot v end or comma v end. And I wrote the lambda right above it and didn't even use it. So very sad, epic fail there, but that's our first algorithm. Our second algorithm is also another any of. So these two lines here, we need to declare a second lambda that takes the J as a uh, not a parameter, but captures it. So I'm going to switch, you know, this AB to a reference, and then in our second lambda, uh, pass in uh, the ampersand for uh, capturing everything as well. Um, but these two lines are going to turn into a second lambda and an any of algorithm. And then the outer loop, where we are setting a boolean to true and then trying to keep it true as as long as all the uh, predicates are met. This is an all of. So if we take a look at this code, uh, it turns into this. So uh, we still have our first lambda here. Um, I've changed the way instead of pushing back because that's less efficient. You're doing more allocations there. Um, do a uh, allocation up front um, just using the uh, two times n. And then we can read in, uh, yeah, we can read in two times i. Uh, which is basically going to read in each of our values to uh, the 0th, 2nd, 4th, and so on, and then just set the value after each of those to be the negative. And then here are our algorithms. So if any of vbegin.vn pass in our lambda, in this case, Vanja wins. Uh, and then we have our, our two nested lambdas, or our one uh, nested lambda, but uh, two algorithms. Uh, so all of... Uh, v but v begin dot v end and then our uh, second lambda here 
uh, which is then capturing, uh, then using another lambda internally here. So this one is taking the j that's been passed in from the outer algorithm and using it here to check to see if i plus j equals a or i plus j equals b. And then uh, you're returning if any of v begin dot v end, uh, passing in the lambda f. And if this is satisfied, it means that no matter what Vanja chooses, Misky, Mixi can choose a number to get to one of our targets, so output 2, otherwise output 0. So the last thing to talk about for this problem is the time complexity, and we're going to have t test cases, and our algorithm in our else if case are going to generate an, a quadratic algorithm, so overall it's going to be a big O of t times n squared.